Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to become a blockchain developer if you're in college or you're freshly out of college. And really this video is gonna have a lot of good advice for anybody who's trying to become a blockchain developer and really doesn't have much professional programming experience. Or really anybody who's trying to get started as a blockchain developer. So if you're in any of those categories, be sure to stick around for this whole video to kind of pick up on the pointers that I'm gonna give. So before we get into all that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And also, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So I got this email from somebody named Varun, so one of you all. Um, he emailed me kind of asking my advice on how to get started as a freelance blockchain developer as a freshman in college. So I'm gonna kind of go through this email and give some feedback and hopefully that helps Varun and also you know other people watching who might be in a similar category or just don't have much experience or just trying to get started as a blockchain developer in general. So I'll read through this email. So Varun asks, and sorry if I'm getting your name wrong, um, forgive me. <laughs> so first of all, I wanted to say that I love your content on YouTube, thank you very much. And I find your videos to be very helpful. I'm a freshman in college who is trying to become a blockchain freelancer by this summer. And your videos definitely made me uh, become interested in doing so. Over the winter break, I completed a Udemy course on Solidity. I have a pretty good idea about how to build smart contracts and incorporate them into web applications. Um, so, however, I don't have much programming experience because he only started coding in the fall when he started college. Um, also, I've not really built any of my own projects yet. I just started building uh, this tutorial. I looked at some of the developers on Upwork, and most of them have multiple years of programming experience, and they're experts in so many different things. Also, most companies seem to want to only hire experts, and I definitely am not one. So I just wanted to know why would anyone hire me over the other developers who are so much more experienced than me? Also, would it be okay to add uh, add to the projects I've done from other tutorials, from my portfolio? Okay, so that's kind of the gist of the email. So Varun is a freshman in college. Um, he wants to become a freelancer by this summer and he hasn't been programming very long and he feels like he just can't compete with other freelancers out there like on Upwork.com. They seem to have all this experience and it seems like you know employers only want to hire people who are experts. So there's a lot in there, Varun, but I will try to answer as much as possible. All right, so I'll also start with a caveat by saying, you know, I can only gain so much about your situation from this one email. So I don't want you to take what I say here as like the final, this is what you should do advice. But I do want to kind of help unpack this and maybe help you think about some options that you haven't thought about yet, right? So and I'm gonna have to guess on a few things just because I don't I don't know you, I don't know all about your situation. Um, so I don't know what your needs are for this summer. You know, you you said that you want to be a freelancer by this summer, uh, which is a relatively short timeline if you haven't been programming very long. Um, it's not it's not impossible. I'm just saying that's a pretty immediate need, right? So I don't know if you have to you know support yourself to pay rent for that time. Um, and, you know, I don't know how much money you need. I don't know what your financial needs are, really. So I don't know if you have a pressing financial need or, you know, if you can wait, right? If you don't have that pressure or you don't necessarily need to pay for your expenses over the summer. I don't know. Maybe you can live with your parents since you're still in college. Um, there's lots of things I don't know here. So if you have to provide for yourself and you really are determined to become a freelancer, this is what I would say. I wouldn't wait till the summer. I would start now trying to become a freelancer while you're still in school, you probably, I mean, unless you have an unbearable amount of coursework, I would try to get that ball rolling before the summer gets here. Because if you are, you know, in uh, the Northern Hemisphere and the summer is only a few months away, it's only March at the time I'm making this video, especially if you're in college um, and you, you know, most universities let out in a few months. So, um, you know, I don't want to scare you, but that time is approaching fast. And if you really need to make money, I would start freelancing now to start, you know, maybe saving up to give yourself some buffer or uh, something like that, or at least kind of get your uh, kind of, you just get, get that ball rolling now. 
Um, and if it's not so much of a pressure, like if you don't have the big financial pressure, like you have maybe your parents helping you or some other means of financial support, um, then, you know, maybe I would just wait till the summer and then try to get started and get your feet wet with some experience. You know, if, if it's something you want to continue long term, like while you're still in college, uh, like taking classes and not over the summer, um, you know, then you can kind of keep that going on the side as the school year goes around. I'm assuming you don't have any classes over the summer from kind of the tone of your email. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. But so if you're a new programmer and you feel like you can't compete, I understand that, right? I understand seeing people out there with all these skills in the marketplace who are, you know, commanding prices that look reasonable with all this experience, right? And you feel like, how can I compete? How can I do this as a new programmer? It is tough. So I, what I would say this is you want to find your value. And this is something people misunderstand all the time. So freelancer rates, um, any work that's ever done in a business to business relationship, and really any reason anyone pays for anything is about value. And prices aren't set arbitrarily. Prices are set based on markets. Markets determine prices, and that's based on value, or at least perceived value. So for you, as a beginner, you have to find what your value is and what your competitive edge is and how you can compete with other people in the marketplace um, to bring value to people who want, you know, blockchain developers. So for you as a brand new beginner, how can you be competitive? Well, you can compete with programmers with multiple years of experience on price, especially if you're still in college, right? I know this doesn't sound super appealing because a lot of people become developers to make a lot of money, and that's not a bad reason to want to, you know, become a developer, right? Especially a blockchain developer. But... When you're just getting started, and especially in your case, since you don't have much programming experience, like getting experience is still worth something to you, right? And you could still make a small amount of money and gain a lot of experience so that you can move to the stage of making more money a lot faster, right? If you can never get started, then you can never get to the point where you're making more money, right? But if you start small and then can raise your rates over time, you can actually get there, right? So that's what I would say. Now, as far as the types of projects that you do or the client type of clients you work with, um, this might be, you might have to think a little bit differently as a beginner without much experience, right? You have to be pretty, you have to get an idea of what you're capable of, right? You don't want to bite off um, a chunk that's too much for you to handle and something that you can't deliver on. And... I know that's hard to gauge whenever you're a beginner. So you might have to jump into a few projects to find out sort of what your limits are and what you're are, you know, are aren't capable of. But at the same time, you don't want to be afraid of challenges. Especially when you're new and you're really gaining knowledge, you're probably never going to get onto a project where you know how to do 100% of the amount of work that it's going to require or have 100% of the skills that are required or to complete the project. I mean, I find myself getting into situations where I still don't know, you know, how to do some of the things that are required, but I've been doing this so long that, you know, I just, I, I learn very quickly and you can still learn fast as a beginner. You know, part of the, part of the, the challenge for you is that knowledge acquisition and getting better at that. So you can get better and charge higher rates. Um, and you can do that on the job. I mean, it's more efficient. Why wouldn't you get paid to learn things? That's awesome. So I would say this, when you're talking about clients and types of projects to work on, you might want to consider working for another programmer, like another freelancer, okay? And this is something you just may not have considered. A lot of people think when I'm a freelancer, I need to go find a bunch of clients. I need to find, you know, like companies or, you know, independent entrepreneurs or whatever who are trying to build projects and want to pay me to build something for them. Well, like I was saying a minute ago, you kind of need to know what you are and aren't capable of and what your limits are. And you definitely don't want to like commit to a project that you can't fully deliver on. And so a way maybe to help with that is to work underneath a freelancer who has similar technical skills or maybe complementary technical skills that wants to hire you out for something they can't do or wants to offload some of their more, you know, uh, less valuable work to you. Right, So there might be a blockchain developer who has a lot of work and can give you some of their more routine kinds of things they do over and over again um, or can delegate some tasks to you. And you know, if you can charge half of what they're billing per hour or a fraction, whatever it is, right? 
you know, there might be a good value proposition there. They get some benefit, you get some benefit. It's a win-win. And so how do you find these people? Well, you mentioned that you're looking for blockchain jobs and Upwork and looking at other freelancers' profiles. So why wouldn't you just reach out to some of those freelancers in Upwork? You know, you kind of use it as a different tool. Instead of, you know, shopping for freelancers to do work for you, why wouldn't you shop for freelancers that you can work for, right? And so you mentioned, um, you know, how can I get a portfolio? Is it okay to use my tutorial projects for portfolio pieces? You could do that as a starting point. You know, if you want to get started today, you know, looking for um, work, you, you could certainly do that. And what I would like to see you do is take some of your tutorial projects and use them like as a way to think about how to build your own project and maybe try at least one thing to see if you can just build something um, sort of from scratch as being inspired by the tutorial and use that knowledge to do something yourself so that you can kind of test your skills and that will be a starting point to see what you are and aren't capable of, right? So that's what I would say. That gives you a portfolio to like present to other freelancers potentially who could hire you and you know where to find the freelancers. Um, you know, you could charge some amount of their rate that they show on Upwork. It's, it's advertised, so you could just half it um, or, you know, whatever, right? Whatever, you, whatever your financial needs are, you could sort of do the math and look at their published hourly rates and say, how much do I need to work, right, in order to pay my bills or, or cover my bases or do whatever you need to make it worth it for you and just charge that, right? You gain experience, which will be useful for you and valuable for you at this stage in the game. So my last bit of advice, and this is something you didn't ask about in your email, um, but this is what I want to stress. You don't want to be too short-sighted in all of this. I know you really want to get a job as a blockchain developer, as a freelancer by this summer, but try to think beyond that, right? Don't just be thinking about what you need to do in a few months. Be thinking about where you want to be in a few years or five years and 10 years and try to make your decisions based on that. I know that's easier said than done, but that's something that I really wish that I'd done more of when I was your age. And I find myself having grown into that type of thinking as I've gotten older and it served me so much better. Like if you're always thinking about the long term and optimizing for the long term, you'll find that you're making better decisions that will, you know, just serve you better as your life goes on. And, you know, it, do you want to become, uh, you know, a blockchain developer like right now and then move on to something else? Or do you want to really you know, become a good developer and really gain the skills. So I would think about that and try to do whatever you can to optimize for that rather than just this summer. So I hope you found that helpful and I hope other people found that helpful. Again, thanks for the email. Again, if anybody else is interested in you know, having some of these questions answered on my channel, you can email me at gregory at dappuniversity.com. I can't get to every email. I get a lot of emails. So my apologies in advance if you don't hear back from me right away. I've been trying to answer some of these emails on my YouTube channel. So again, I hope you all like this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the thumbs up button down below. And also, as always, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.